President-elect Kamen Shanmugaram's landslide victory is a reflection of his personal popularity and showed that voters did not treat this election as a referendum on the ruling People's Action Party PAP, said political analysts. They say the former senior minister's personal standing and clout among Singaporeans garnered him the lion's share of the votes and a resounding mandate to be the republic's ninth head of state. In the presidential election on Friday, Mr. Taman, 66, secured 70.4% of the vote, while his fellow candidates in Kok Song and Tan Kin Lian, both 75, received 15.72% and 13. 88% respectively. More than 2.5 million Singaporeans went to the polls on Friday at 1,264 polling stations across the island. During the hustings, political analysts noted that the endorsements Mr Tan had received from various opposition politicians could lead voters to see the presidential election as a proxy for the next general election. The margin by which Mr. Taman won was thus surprising and unexpected for some analysts, given recent scandals that plagued the PAP in the last few weeks that they felt could have tainted his candidacy. Mr. Taman had resigned from the PAP and his post in cabinet in July to run for president after 22 years in politics. Dr. Leong Chon Hoon, head of policy development, Evaluation and Data Analytics at Cantor Public said he was surprised that Mr. Taman obtained a large share of the votes given the scandals such as a Corrupt Practices Investigation Bureau probe into Transport Minister S. Iswaran and an extramarital affair between former Speaker of Parliament Tan Chuan Jin and former Tampanese GOC MP Cheng Li Hui. He also noted that Mr. Ng had a credible track record. Having been the former chief investment officer of GIC, the results show voters look past the issues that plagued the PAP and focus on Mr. Taman's credentials, Dr. Leong said. If we look at what happened in the last couple of months, you would expect Mr. Taman's political background and his affiliation to the ruling party to have been a liability. He added. The electorate was mature enough to look beyond that and consider his personal track record, he said. Singapore Management University SMU Associate Professor of Law Eugene Tan said he would have been surprised if anyone had expected a landslide win for Mr. Thurman. But the results do not suggest that ground sentiments have shifted in favour of the PAP, he added, noting that voters were clear the election was about choosing a president rather than using it as an opportunity to have a referendum on the ruling party. It would be, in my view, a complete misreading of the ground to interpret the results as a signal that the ruling party should go for an early general election, said Professor Tan. Assistant Professor Walid Dumblad Abdullah of Nanyang Technological University School of Social Sciences called Mr. Thurman's win a resounding victory. Dr. Walid said, evidently, the scandals didn't matter as much. But more broadly, because Taman was from the PAP and the whole contest was about who was independent, I think the results show that the party brand has not been damaged too much by recent happenings. Even though the issue of Mr. Taman's independence was a recurrent sticking point throughout the hustings, it clearly did not hurt him at the ballot box. Constitutional expert and National University of Singapore NUS adjunct law professor Kevin Tan said that in the process of the contest, Mr. Taman had managed to distance himself from being the epitome of the PAP. Dr. Chung Jo Ian, associate professor of political science at NUS, noted that Mr. Taman's 70.4% vote share was not far off from his historical vote share when leading Jurong GOC at previous general elections. The president-elect wrote on his popularity going into the election, and he had two relatively weak opponents, said Dr. Chong. He pointed out that few people knew of Mr. Ng before the election and while Mr. Tan was known to the public, 
he was called out for making controversial statements about women and race that Dr. Chung said were insulting, to say the least. It does show that Singaporean voters are willing to support the right sort of establishment candidate, said Dr. Chung. Dr. Gillian Koh, senior research fellow at the Institute of Policy Studies IPS, said Mr. Taman was gracious as a candidate, one who fought clean, trying to walk the talk of his campaign slogan, Respect for All. While Mr. Tan must have been compelling to listen to C express concern about the daily livelihoods of the people, Dr. Ko said most also knew that it would be difficult for him to shape policy by addressing this with the government due to the president's limited role. In comparison, she said, Mr. Thurman spoke of wanting to provide an optimistic future and building social solidarity around a sense of egalitarianism. Everyone matters, and in truth, his track record as a political leader made this credible, she added. Dr. Mustafa Izzadin, a senior international affairs analyst at Solaris Strategies Singapore, said Mr. Thurman derived his high vote share from middle ground voters. These voters are a diverse group who tend to vote pragmatically, he added, noting that they also tend to be undecided and make their decision at the very last minute. Dr. Mustafa said this group of voters may have felt that the presidential election had become a somewhat polarizing contest in the course of campaigning. Specifically, he pointed to how Mr. Tan was endorsed by Dr. Tan Cheng Bok, the chairman of the Progress Singapore Party, as well as Singapore Democratic Party member Tan Ji Se. The three men were former candidates in the 2011 presidential election, which was won by former Deputy Prime Minister Tony Tan. Mr. Tan was also backed by other opposition party members such as Mr. Lin Ting, founder of People's Voice. These developments resulted in a positive spillover effect for Mr. Thurman, said Dr. Mustafa. He said, there may have been middle ground voters who have grievances with the government but decided to err on the side of caution. They went for someone who they are familiar with, can relate to, and can discharge the role of the president. One key factor that analysts said tipped the skills in the president-elect's favor was the Thurman effect. He had his own long-standing credentials built up over his years as an MP and minister. And his relatability factor. Dr. Mustafa said much credit goes to the president-elect himself. Besides his track record and credentials, Mr. Thurman's personality and graciousness shown throughout the election season which helped him get a lot of support, Dr. Mustafa added. IPS Dr. Ko said Mr. Thurman is the total package due to his international standing, his competence and commitment to the well-being of Singaporeans and Singapore, and his earnestness in campaigning. NUS Dr. Chong highlighted that Singaporeans can and do vote for minority candidates. It's about trust in the candidate said Dr. Chong. Of course, minority candidates have to be strong to win support, just like ethnic Chinese candidates. It's just that race may not be a deciding factor. SMU's Professor Tan said that Mr. Thurman ran a dignified campaign, which won him even more support. We now have our first non-Chinese president elected in a contest with a resounding victory. It speaks of a sophisticated, discerning electorate.